What is up, my bitch crew? Nick Morris here. Welcome to another episode of Real Adventures Hawaii. Today is Tuesday, so today's our Taco to Tuesday. We're actually gonna go to Eva Beach Buy and Sell again to see Bill, and Bill's actually gonna help us with our taco tip today. Uh, I know lots of you guys have been asking about um, like damashi sabiki rigs. I made a video before, and I'll put a link up there, or it might be the other side, and I'll put a link in the bio. You guys can actually watch the video I made before, but it's good to see somebody else's variation of it. So let's go into Ever Beach by and let's see Bill's variation of how he does the damashi. He said he has a super simple way that's really easy and good to use. But if it is your first time here, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell notification to be notified when I post videos like this. All right, we're back. Let's go inside. So in Bill's shop, he's going to show us how he ties his version of the damashi. Damashi. Sabiki rig also too, because damashi apparently is a proprietary name to uh, um, a certain brand. So actually Sabiki rig, damashi, but you know. All right, so what I have is I, I really like Vanish in the 14 and the 17. And I go with the Vanish usually when I'm making these rigs for um, for Opelu. If I'm going for Opelu, because I'm using smaller smaller lures. And then if I'm going for something off the bottom, like maybe for goats or papillos or whatever stores the bottom, uh, I like to do J-line because it seems to be a little bit stronger. So when I get something big, I've had uh, big fish hit the 14 and the seven, uh, the 14 and the 17 for Vanish, and they snap. So when I, usually when I'm going, when I'm working this bottom specifically for bigger fish, I go with the J-line because it's a little bit stronger. But the the Vanish seems to work really well when I'm going for Opelo. It seems to catch more fish. And then the hook choices uh, for Opelo, I usually like to do an AH, but in this case, I'm just showing you some BKN uh, size 8, size 10 is usually where I like to hang out. Some guys like to do a little bit bigger. I like to keep them a little bit smaller. Uh, and then the 189s, I really like. Um, they do get hung up a little bit more because the, the barb is sticking out. I think you just mentioned in a video, you like the BKNs because the, the barb is sticking in. Um, and then these are set up for curly tails. And I'm showing you right here. Um, this is from my private stash. These are low hands. Probably one of my favorite bottom fishing grubs. And uh, these are, I think, one and a half inch grubs. And I use the... the barbed hooks, these little 189 hooks, because they have a little pokey on the back and it keeps the grub in place. So if the fish will hit it and they don't commit to the hook, it won't rip off the rip off the hook. I didn't know that. So all the, the 189s have that little barb on the back? They have little barbs on the back. Oh, the I didn't know that. And it actually keeps the grub from sliding off. Okay. And that's really good when you're whipping, but unfortunately when you're whipping, um, the barb is sticking out and it'll catch more ogle and such. So oh. I don't really like the, when I'm whipping from shore, I don't like these. When I'm uh, using for bottom fishing, I use in the circles. Okay, okay. All right, so all the gear you're gonna need, you're gonna need some monofilament line, you need some hooks. Um, if, you're doing, if you're doing it for grubs, don't touch the grubs before you set it up because it's gonna get oil on your hands and you need a little bit of grip when you're tying the line. I'm using uh, some monofilament, uh, some trialing, just for demonstration purposes. You also need some lead, and that's the bank sinkers that you need for uh, getting it down to the bottom. And my last thing is just some small little Ziploc bags, and I use those for storing the damashis, keeping them in order. Sometimes I'll keep them in my life vest or I'll keep them in my dry box on, my, on the boat. What I like to do is I usually go by about 18 inches. And what I'll do is I'll take an 18-inch section, I'll pinch the line right here in the middle. Now. What I usually do is I check to see if that pinch will be easy to go through the hook. And in this case, it's not really. So what I do is I'll slide the hook down the line. And you always point the, the hook out. So I'm going to take all three hooks and slide them down the line. And three. And I only go with three because it makes it everything a little less chaotic. On a kayak or something, when you have a whole bunch of hooks, it kind of adds to the chaos and... Uh, kayak fishing is already chaotic as is. So here we go. I'll slide the hook up into that bend I just made. I'll take two ends of the line and I will twist them. One coming towards me and one going the opposite direction. There you go. So the hook's going to be in the middle of that twist. Do a little bit more than you want your arm to do it because when you do a dropper loop you lose a little bit of that arm. And it's basically just a dropper loop. Uh, hopefully you'll have a demo, uh, a graphic to kind of show people how to do it. One, two, three leave the opening put your hook and everything through there pull it out a little bit and cinch it down and what that does it creates a nice little leg for your damashi and it's I've caught up to about a maybe a eight nine pound fish on this before um, and I've lost a few from something really big coming to hit it but it's meant for catching smaller fish oh yeah on the on the beginning part of it what I like to do is I like to do a a Rapala knot, which is basically a non-slip loop. And the reason why I like the Rapala is because it gives me a loop on each end. 
So mm -hmm. after after you slide on your hooks, then then you do your, your rapala knot on the top. Yeah, I usually do it first or last. So do a little non-slip loop right on the end, and that non-slip loop you can put it onto a a snap swivel. And then another thing too is that it's just good enough for when you actually get to either side, you can poke it through a hole on a bank sinker, and you will be able to do a, a little loop on it. And that's all I do. Some guys will do rubber bands and things. Um, it's not necessary. So what I do is if that lead gets stuck, I'll usually just wind up breaking the uh, the breaking the line. And you know maybe I'll get back one or two hooks, and then I'll do another dropper loop and keep keep fishing on it. So this is a good variation. You can use it for like either like for opelu or for just general general bottom fish off the bottom. Right? Yeah, this is more for. I think it's more for me. Uh, this one's kind of like for a bottom fishing one. The opelu one, I'll usually wind up using AH hooks, which are a little smaller. Uh, opelus have smaller mouth is, mouse than most of the fish that are on the bottom. So, and uh, plus when you're going for opelu, you're using smaller smaller bait, sometimes flies, or you're using you know the Campanula, lures bloodworms are really good. Oh, wait, you're just making them 18 inches apart. 18 inches apart because what happens is you know you when you're making the damashi, you're actually taking up a little bit of that 18 inches, and yeah. usually they're far enough away from each other between the legs that uh, they don't catch each other on the way down. Three, take the hook and everything, slide it through. It's the same dropper loop again, right? Yep, yeah, same dropper loop. And I, I learned this just, um, I combined a bunch of different things. My friend showed me a damashi. Uh, I saw some ideas online on how to tie your own sabiki rigs. And this just kind of evolved from different people that I know tie rigs. Um, and this has kind of been my standard from, from that point on. Let me catch it one more time. And I used to just tie about five or six of them when I was watching fishing shows or something. Back in the day, I would tie these while, uh, while I was entertained with something. And by the end of the show, I'd have about three or four for the next time I went out. <laughs> and I'll probably burn through two on average. And... I need to find a pair of scissors to cut the tag in. I guess I'll just cut it with my teeth. But um, as soon as you've got three of them, okay. So when you get to the end, you do another 18 inches. Wow. Rapala knot for the top two, and it's basically just a non-slip loop on both ends. And like I said, I'll put that on a snap swivel or something. And uh, you know, I'll have my main line tied to the snap swivel, and I'll just use whatever snap swivel I have available. And then you basically have. A three hooked on machine, and you, you got to get the tangles out, let it kind of twirl and let that twist get out. So, there you got a three leg on machine. And then, what I would do is uh, before I go out, I'll take this rig, kind of helps out when you're when you when you finally get to the spot, you don't want to have your lead swinging all around. So, what you do is you you take your grubs, and like I said, don't grub it up before you. Uh, while you're tying line because the grubs usually have an oil on it and I like to actually slide it up the hook as opposed to just doing the head I'll dig in about halfway through poke the hook out and then I'll have it go up over the end of the knot so it's right about there if something bites it it's usually get, if it might get the tail it might get the back end and I'll put all all three hooks rigged up with a grub I, I'll take my hand and I'll basically just wrap it around my hand a couple times. And the grubs will naturally go towards the bottom because they have a little bit of weight. And I'll take that, pinch it all together. Take my little Ziploc bags that I have already ready. Put the grubs in first. And I'll just stuff it in there. It usually doesn't get too tangled, and if it does, it only takes a matter of a couple seconds. You yeah. push it in there, and the cool part is, is that this will... It takes up, any room it takes up no room. Yeah. So, you know, I'm always wearing my life vest, so I have those little pouches there. So, so I keep it three. Uh, if I'm on a, on a big boat or something, I'll go four because you have a little bit more leeway and a little more legging where you can deal with a little bit of the, uh, the, uh, the chaos that comes when, you, when you're using three hooks on a setup, you know? So what I'll do is I'll show you uh, with our uh, Hawaiian angler glow flies too that you can do this. So mm -hmm. like, like I said, you first start off with a uh, a Rapala knot on the end. And that's basically just a non-slip loop. 
take a little bit of slack, put your lure or your hook right in the middle, do a nice little twist, and then go a little bit longer than you want because you're going to lose a little bit of that when you do your dropper loop. One, overlap one, two, three. You got to pinch a nice little bubble or a nice little opening so you can put the entire lure and hook through. just cinch it down. You don't have to over pull it because if a fish hits it it'll it'll actually tighten it for you. you know, but these are this will work really well when you find a, a nice spot for reds off the boat and of course you would tie a flash bomb on the top of it. Yep. Would they be work really well off the off the boat. I've caught um, a coolie off the boat and there's a lot of commercial fishermen that come through and they use the uh, they use the flash bombs on top of their bottom fishing rigs. And do your Rapala knot again on the end. But there you go. You got another three-leg Damashi. So right there, you get the best of both worlds. You got one with the fly, and you got one with the, uh, now, with the grub. Now I know how much time I'm in Pachiri for another <laughs> I learned something new today. <laughs> one, you just wrap it around and let your... And it's cool because you can, you know, if you ever got time, it's, it's, it's rather inexpensive. All you're paying for is just the hooks, the grubs, and... And the line. And the good thing is, you know, because you're tying your own, you can change up the colors. You can make it yeah. all different colors, not just one color. Two rings with minimal space. That's awesome like that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to Bill for actually showing me his variation of how he's tied Damashi. Uh, like I said, I'll put uh, the one I tied a few months back. I'll put it in the bio. You can check that out. But I definitely learned something new today how he ties his. So thanks again, Bill. Hello, guys. As always, tight line, stay fishing. And uh, here's a clip of what you're going to see on Friday. All right, everybody. Hello.